Hello everybody, this is Tazlon. I am in Lakeville Standard Mode South Spawn of my VK2801 for Volume 1 of a new tutorial series that's going to be called Random Scout Tips. I'm going to take whatever mission I have that I feel like reporting on and discussing different techniques I use during the battle. And over time, you'll end up with a whole variety of different tips on scouting and and pointers, maybe things to do, things not to do. I won't be able to say, hey, I'm going to do this next or this next, because I don't know what I'm going to do next. Whatever battle I feel like doing, that's what I'll do. In this case, we're going to be looking at a little bit of initial positioning, reacting to what's going on in the battlefield during the mid part of the fight, and then at the end, looking at threat assessment and choosing who to pick next with a special emphasis on already hunting in that. There's only one scout apiece. Here's what I'm looking at in the 30 second timer. First of all, I already know I'm going middle road because there's only one scout, one medium that I really have to worry about spotting me, the Comet and the MT-25. I also have to worry about the uh, all three TDs really, but most likely the E-25 or the IKV-65 setting up over in here somewhere and being able to shoot me a lot if they, if I get seen over here. But as you'll see, I do this a little bit different than most of the people. Matter of fact, I don't know anybody that does it like I do. I'm sure there's some. You'll see what I do. Um, so I've told my team I'm looking for tanks up in these three hexes. In case anybody wants to snipe, they'll be able to set up and do that. Or Artie can aim in there. It doesn't ever hurt to tell people what you plan on doing, especially as a scout. And especially if you plan on sitting in the back or something, tell them what you're going to do so that they don't tell you to go scout and try to shoot you or something right away. So we're going to go off here and you'll see as I go up the middle I don't quite do it the way most people do. There's two bushes right up in here a lot of people use. Some people try to go up and peek farther up the road. I don't like doing that. I died too many times. Too. So I'm going to come up here to the left of the road. The left of the road. And this is important. Whenever you're passive spotting in a place where there's a high likelihood of you being seen, especially if you fire a weapon, turn around, face toward your retreat lane. If I'm still looking up the road and somebody sees me, I have to turn around before I can escape. I am already set up to hightail it down the road if I have to get out of here fast. So this is a lifesaver, people. If you know you're in a situation where you may have to exfiltrate quickly, have your tank already pointed in the direction where you need to escape to. It saves your life many, many, many times. Now in this case, we get an early kill. Don't see anybody else headed over that way. And you can see if they if they hug this northern line, I may not see them unless they're heavy. A smaller tank will get by going by that way. There's the ram over there. I'm going to see if I can shoot him. I'm looking at how we're deploying and so many people are going valley. I mean, that's just... Uh, you want to have a, a defensive force in the valley? Sometimes you can win the map by pushing the valley if the other team defends it lightly. But if it gets down into a drag out fight, it's just the valley kills your team. If they have a defensive force and push the town, we lose the map. Haven't seen enough tanks yet to know. Here goes the Cromwell B. He's going up there too early. If he wants to go up there and turn around and come back, that's cool. He sees the MT-25. At the moment, I'm thinking, hey, maybe I can go help him with the scout. It'd be nice to have that pair of eyes off the map. But then as he pushes further up, there's another TD. And you'll see in a second, there's the comet. Nope, I'm not going up into that. I will die. Guaranteed I will die if I go up there. So I'm going to turn around. My initial plan is to come down here and spot and try to shoot back this way, snipe. But the Cromwell B wants to play peek a boom with the guys and he's out of there quick. That was a losing proposition. They had more guns than we did. They had more hit points. They had better guns than we did. It wasn't going to work out. He tried to push it and paid the price. So now I'm going to come over here and just watch the middle road. See if that MP25 or the Comet tries to run down here a little bit. I'll take a couple blind shots if I can into the alleys where they like to sit at. That lane right there, if he's there, if he's the, the scout, I won't say, oh, here he comes. He's not wasting any time. Now, I'm not shooting great at the beginning. 
and I don't have my normal graphic interface set up because the uh, replays aren't working right when I have it. So every time I do a replay, I delete my res mods file, or take all the files out of it. Then when I go back to playing again, I put it back. So you can't see XVM or anything like that simply because one of the mods I have in there is um, for some reason not working quite right in the program right now as far as replays go. So now with us having won the town, the MT-25 came down. Nobody came down with him. But these TDs in the Comet at the top of the, of the road here are going to be engaging my heavies over to the right. So now's the time for me to push up the road. Earlier, I would have died. Now, I can come up here and help these guys. People are paying attention to the heavies. I should be able to come up here and get some shots. There's the Artie up there. See the other Artie orbiting the valley, supporting them. That's cool. He can't shoot me. Oh, there goes the IKB. Almost hit him. Now one of the things you have to do in certain situations, this is getting down toward the end of the fight. We know one of the Arties is over on the other side. I don't know where the E25 is yet. But I know that 65 is back there behind that building. I also know if he moves either way, south or north, I'm going to see him if I stay here. So I'm just going to set up and wait. This is like a cat hunting a mouse. You got to have a little patience. There are times to be impatient. There are times to be patient. And right now, I want this guy to expose himself. He's not going to sit back there for long. He knows there's nobody left over there, most likely. He's going to move. And when he does, I'm going, I'm going to shoot him. Here we go. Pop. Now, off to find more people. We have a four-tank lead right now. Ends up getting closer. Yeah. So I know the E25 is up here somewhere because he just shot that guy. And I don't I didn't know it for certain at the time, but based on the amount of damage, I just assumed it was the E25. He's the only one left that I know could do that amount of damage. And there he is, so I'm gonna pull up and just try to get a shot at the side of him here. I know the Artie's back there somewhere. I know where the 1304 was. I don't know where the other one is at all, so. Oh, he just shot me, he killed my driver. I'll pay him back. Bam, there goes the E25. Now, we know the one Artie's here, so I'm going to go back this way and uh, see if I can figure out where his friend is. They're taking pot shots at me. I think, yep, they're both over there. So instead of coming around the corner like I think they're probably going to think I am, I'm going to come up here on top. Take this guy out real quick. Now, did you notice the one on the left just shot? If the one on the right would have shot, I would have switched to the one on the left. You want to shoot the guy. You want to shoot the man who's the least or the most threat to you. As I was aiming in on the guy to the right, the guy on the left shot. He's absolutely no threat at me for a few seconds. So I want to hold my aim on the guy on the right. Now, if I had been lining up my aim and the guy on the right had shot and missed, then I would have switched to the guy on the left. Why? Because he's the one that's going to be able to shoot at me the quickest. So in this case, I didn't have to switch my target, and I also had the luxury of knowing I'm going to aim in and get another shot at the second guy before he can possibly reload. He, he reloads fast, but unless he has the fastest reload ever, there wasn't any way he was going to get reloaded and take another shot at me before I could wipe him out. With this gun, I know most of the time I'll get a one-shot kill on him. Not always, but most of the time, so I'm willing to take that risk and sit there and just bet that I can fire at him and kill him before he gets to shoot at me and it worked out. Now we just have the comet left down south. So I'm not going to waste any time capping or anything. I'm just going down there and hopefully get down there in time to help out my TD. He's almost dead. One hit point left. I don't think I'm going to make it, but you never know. That, he dies. Now, I have a choice. Do I want to go down there after the comet or not? Nope, I'm not going to. It's just the panther and me. He's going to take at least two shots to kill unless I get to shoot into his side and get a good hit. So I'm going to pull over here to the left, or to the right. And hopefully, this will allow me to get the first shot back up to where he can't shoot me and get reloaded before he gets to shoot me one time. Very unlikely he's going to kill me in one shot unless he gets lucky and ammo racks me. But I definitely need two shots on him, so here we go. 
He sees me, not in time to shoot me now. I back up, he shot over my bow. Now we're just gonna come together, I went ramming. And there's the game. I rammed and if I had to, my shot was almost ready to shoot him. There's no way he's gonna get a third shot off and kill me, he was mine. If I would have sat out in front of him and just tried to take him one-on-one -on -one straight on, he probably would have killed me. So by moving off to the left, I got him to miss that first shot because he didn't have much of a target to shoot at. He's shooting on the run. Low percentage shot on his part with me retreating as soon as I fire. He doesn't have much to hit. And it worked out. He missed. I hit him. And in the final thing there, it's like, do I want to wait to reload? No. I have the hit points left to ram him. When you need damage fast, don't be afraid to ram if it's going to keep you alive. In this case, even if it killed me, it didn't matter as long as he died because guess what? Our GW Panther was still alive. So all I had to do was take this dude out and we win the fight. If I died, oh well. I didn't want to die and have him remain alive because he could probably overpower the GW Panther. So my goal was to take him out no matter what it took and that's why I ran. In the end... I end up with 1,983 XP, 1,580 damage, 6 kills, 1,646 assisted damage in 5 spots. I earned 34,263 credits, and then I got a Pass Coochie, a Top Gun, a Patrol Duty, and a Kamikaze Medal. So good mission for the medals, good mission for the results of the battle, and it was a pretty fun mission to play. As you know, I started off coming up here. I didn't go up into these bushes all the way up like a lot of people do. I pulled over right here, turned my tank around, and sat up on the side of the hill a little bit. Can't go up as high as he used to because he slid back down. But it lets me see right in this area. It lets me see from about here yeah, over to here. If they stay up against the, the very border of the map, unless they're heavies, you won't see them. But most people trying to get to town fast, they take a shortcut across here, and, and you light them up for your team. We got one kill out of it, found the Ram 2, then the Cromwell B decided to get gutsy and pull up here. It would have been okay if he would have just simply turned around and come back. We know what we're dealing with. But he tried to peek around the rock up there and shoot it out with three tanks, and that just isn't a winning proposition. One on three, you're not going to get away with it. Every time you peek around, at least one of them is going to hit you. And before I could even get back down here and position myself to help him out sniping, he was dead. So... I came down here just to see if any of them had poked their noses down here. MT-25 tried to run south. He didn't make it very far because he was exposed as soon as he started getting on the southern side of the map. We were able to deal with him. And in the meantime, our two ISs, even though one would have thought at the beginning they were going to be outmanned over here, weren't. Both teams decided to duke it out in the valley. It made for a strange battle. And so they broke through the town, and at that point, we know there's a TD here, a Comet here, who knows what else is up in here. Turns out there are several more tanks backing them up. But with them coming this way, these guys are going to be looking over here, which makes now the perfect time to move up from the south up middle road because I'm going to get flanking shots. And hopefully present them with two fronts to fight here and here, and it's going to mess them up and we can blow them away. I got the kill on the Artie. Had a wait on the IKV-65. He hid behind a building for a while. But hey, when you have the time to wait, you're not being pressured. There's, a matter of fact, no tank around that's, that's trying to move you from where you are. Be patient. Sometimes patience pays off. In this case, he couldn't wait as long as I did. He made a move and he died. And then it was up to the north, exposed the E-25, and back here around the buildings to take his mind off me and then I was able to shoot into his side. At the time I was doing that, one of the 304s shot my driver. Quick repair on that. Don't know where the other one is, thinking he might be back here, so I dip back here first. On the way there, I know they're both over here now, so I pull up instead of coming around the corner, I come up on top. And there comes decision time, which one to shoot at. I don't know which one just fired at me, so I pick one out. While I'm aiming in, the other one fires. Cool. I want to keep my target on the one that I'm aimed at take him out the other guy just fired it's not a threat if i just sit here comet's way down south engaged i don't have to worry about him shooting me so i just sat there reloaded and took the other guy out and then as i tried to go south to get the td he died so it's just basically the comet against me and the gw panther and uh fortunately the comet came north toward me and i was hidden off to the side 
which allowed me to get him to miss his first shot and that let me win the battle. So you have to pay attention in the beginning, turn around. I do it on a bunch of maps. Don't do it on Malinovka because when you're in the bushes there I'm more intent on slowly bush hopping and moving forward instead of retreating but on maps like um, Erlenberg, sometimes on Ruinberg, this this map and, and multiple other maps where you're in a situation where you're spotting and there's a high likelihood you'll get seen and have to escape spin your tank around have the front of your tank facing the direction you want to escape to it saves precious life-saving seconds if you get spotted and have to leave in a hurry you're already pointed the right way your tank can only rotate so fast give yourself the luxury of already being pointed the way you need to go to get out of dodge if you have to get out of dodge okay so there you have it I will be randomly posting more of these series into this series about whatever happens during that battle so over time it'll build up into a good collection right now it's going to be kind of sparse until I start adding more battles I don't really have a schedule for it. Just whenever an interesting one comes up, I will put it online. Thank you, have a good day, and happy hunting.